Hello guys, welcome to Java Jasms. I have given lots of the interview previous three month, and I cracked it multiple company. Okay, and uh, I got a job as well. But I faced lots of the issue. Like right now, you guys also facing regarding that issue. So I am going to identify you like what are the issue people are facing nowadays, and how you have to come up. Okay. So basically, you have to see this interview, which I'm going to share with you. So this interview, you have to see completely. So in that interview, if you see carefully, they're asking multiple questions related to the Spring Boot and Java as well. And then after they are moving to the clouds and then after some security part or something uh, database or UI side. Okay. But nowadays, the demand is the company is demanding he need the people who can speak who can uh, lead the team who can uh, like uh, do the improve the performance of applications as well as he is capable to add on multiple tools environment setups all those things okay so i am thinking like whatever the interview you are providing or giving you have to make sure uh, the interview will be very very um like hard and uh, you have to prepare that way so that you can correct the interview so basically what you have to do is you have to prepare uh, very well okay what are the interview you are giving prepared well structure the questions those he ask it and make sure give the proper answers they are not expecting zigzag answer or anything and try to speak in the interview if you not speak, if you just tell some short words, answer they will not accept it. So I am suggesting you, please, do it, okay? And you will see like uh, getting a chance of the interview will be increased, and also getting a selections will be increased, okay? Thank you so much, and also start watching this interview which is I have uh, given past uh, in three month. So if you watch this, you can get some more idea like what are the type of the questions people are asking nowadays. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's start those video now. The stream basically uh, in Java 8, they have provided the same features. So if I talk about Java 8 features, so you can say like uh, a stream is one of the popular uh, features they have provided. So through the streams, like uh, we can do the operations on uh, array a string or list of the data which is collection which will support basically and we can do the operations or that and then we can get the results so it's basically uh, like reducing the, our code and uh, it's improving the performance you can say and it's supporting for the lazy loading so also they have some improvement inside this method so that uh, we can uh, get the better time complexity also so because of that, we are using the streams and they have a multiple method they have provided like a stream having map methods, filter methods. We can do the filters on the data. We can map it. We can create in the object. And then after we can process with the grouping by collectors, a lot of the classes they have provided. So with that classes, help of that classes, we can do our task uh, very easily and we can process our data. That is the benefit we have. Okay. What is the difference between map and flat maps? Yeah. So if I talk about uh, map and flat map, so basically in the map, uh, we are processing a uh, list of the data. But uh, in the flat map, if you have a list of list data, like nested list. So in that case, uh, we are going with the flat map and we are doing the proce processing on the data with the flat map. Otherwise, we can take the help of the flat, uh, map and we can process the data if we have a just list amount of the data. So that is the basic differences we have. And internally, if I talk about uh, flat map, so they are uh, working nested uh, amount of the data, which is uh, a list we have, nested array list. So in that it will work. Okay. How does the garbage collection work? Garbage collection. Oh. Okay. 
So basically, uh, in Java, they have provided uh, GC, which is garbage collectors, which is uh, improving the performance of our application. So if I talk about garbage collectors, so they have provided the multiple types of the garbage collectors in Java. So like uh, parallel processing or serial garbage collectors. So those are the two garbage collectors they have introduced. Now it is, uh, we have a multiple type of the garbage collectors. But basically, we have two types of the garbage collectors, parallels and uh, sequential. So the, the main task of the garbage collector is like, uh, it will do like, uh, what are the unreferenced data we have or uh, unreferenced object in our classes, in Java classes. So it will clear those objects and it will uh, allow to again use those memory to our uh, system. So that is the benefit we can get with the uh, garbage collectors. So the data which is unreferenced or unused, or maybe those are not required in the future. So those become say unreferenced data and then um, it's unnecessary, it's occupied the data in our memory into the our system. So for that, uh, it help us to clear those data and allocate again those uh, memory to some other uh, processing. Yeah, that's all. Okay, what is the spring auto configurations? Spring auto configurations. So a spring auto configurations basically it's one of the features we can say into the spring boot. So in a spring boot, they have provided uh, multiple features. So one of the features is uh, auto configurations. So in our uh, spring boot, in a spring, basically in the spring, uh, we are configuring each and everything our own into the XML files or maybe with the Java code annotations. But uh, in the Spring Boot, they have added one features, which is auto configurations. And with the help of enable auto configuration annotations, they are providing to a scan entire package or what are the like uh, jars we have provided into the phone.xml. So based on that uh, corresponding what are the details we have provided inside the application.yml or application.putis file. So it will collect all those data and it will configure automatically for us uh, data source or maybe any other connections which is required if you want to connect with S3 bucket. So you just have to provide the details and you have to write the code for that. It's automatically take those details and it will configure it. So like that in the same way we have like, if you want to connect with the JPA, so you can just add the jars or you can provide the credentials for the MySQL drivers and it will go and we connect with the database. So those kind of the activity, it will do automatically. For example, in the spring, we are adding manually uh, Tomcat server, but in uh, spring boot, uh, we don't want to add uh, any server manually. You just want to add the dependency, or maybe if you want, you, if you don't want to add dependency, what are the default uh, servers they have? They will pick those uh, servers and they will compile or run your codes, and it will become a production uh, ready code. We can say so. Those kind of the flexibility they have provided with the help of the auto configurations. Okay. How does a spring cloud configuration work? A spring cloud configurations like, uh, for example, uh, we have some gateway or maybe we have some um, Eureka client. So for that configurations cloud gateway, so in the microservice architectures, we are generally using the spring cloud gateway. So in that, like we are taking the help of same uh, like Netflix or Jules and uh, what are the uh, Spring Boot server we have. So we are adjusting those server with the Eureka servers. Our Eureka servers uh, like is it capable to respond to the our uh, particular front controllers, we can say. And uh, like uh, we are making with the API gateway single entry point. And uh, whenever request will come from the client, it will come to the API gateway. And from the gateway, uh, it will decide like based on the load balancers, it, what are the registered services we have. So those particular uh, services it will load based on the, like what are the configurations we have given for the load balancer. Maybe round robin we have given, right? 
So based on that uh, configurations, it will uh, take those particular inner stains or it will respond those particular inner stains. So those kind of the activity we can do with the Spring Cloud. Okay. How do how do microservices communicate REST and messaging? Sorry. How do microservices communicate REST and my messaging? Okay. So for communicating the microservices to each other. So for example, in the microservice architectures, we have a multiple services. So how the one service will communicate with other services. So for that, we have a multiple way to communicate uh, one service to other service. Sometimes we are using the REST template, uh, REST client, or sometimes we are using Fusion client, and sometimes we are using SOAP also, and gRPC. So those are the couple of way to communicate uh, one services to other services. Nowadays, people are using uh, Kafka also to communicate one service to other services. So Kafka is one of the way to provide the streaming data platforms and uh, process the data, uh, bunch amount of the data very fast. So those kind of the tools we can use are uh, inbuilt web client risk template. Generally, we are using to communicate to one service to other services. Okay. How do you register services in data? How do you register services? Services in Eureka. Okay. For registering a services into the Eureka, like uh, we have some annotations. Like, uh, for example, we have a one client and one is server. So Eureka is a one of the servers. And what other services we have, those we can consider as a client. So what are the Eureka servers, uh, port numbers we have, and uh, for the identify, we have to provide the like we have to enable inside our services enable eureka servers and we have to provide the port numbers like uh, connection port numbers of eureka servers those we can provide it so automatically if you start your services it will go and it will register with your eureka servers if you um, enable it so we have a enable uh, eureka servers or uh, enable uh, Eureka clients. So those are the annotations we have. So those we can use also for uh, communicating. So we can provide the path or port number inside this our uh, application dot properties files or application dot files, and through that we can uh, provide uh, register those uh, services to the Eureka server. Okay. Uh, I have done from my side. Do you have any questions? Uh, questions I don't have. Thank you. Yes, thank you.